Hello Mason Nation and welcome to this week's edition of Mason Sports Insider. I am here to deliver you all of the latest in George Mason University athletics. You know me as Tyler Byron. We'll get started with the men's volleyball team who hosted their first EIVA home competition of the year against Sacred Heart. The match started off with a thriller set that the Patriots took 27 to 25. The Pioneers would then battle back and win the second. But in a third set, the Patriots really began to pull away with a key play establishing momentum from Junior Paco Velez when the score was 18-11. He made this incredible save to keep the ball alive. Velez would go on to record a total of 16 kills in the night, trailing only Radoslav Popov, while Velez would also lead the team in digs with 17. The team would go on to win this EIVA match three sets to two in a game the Patriots only had a seven-player rotation. Brian Nagant continues to amaze as a freshman tallied 52 assists in this game. Heading to the game against Harvard the very next night, the winner would move into a tie with Princeton for second place. After two brutal opening sets that resulted in a one-to-one -one tie, the trials of playing a game the night before began to set in for the Patriots. Harvard would easily take sets 3 and 4 by the score of 25-18 and 25-15. The trio of Popov, Velez, and Jack Wilson combined for 35 of the team's 44 kills, but at the same time were responsible for 30 of the Patriots' 38 errors. The overall team depth of Harvard was too much for the team to overcome. After the 1-1 one one weekend, the team moves to 8-10 on the season, 3-3 three three in the EIVA, in sole position of 4th place in the conference. Leading the EIVA is still nationally ranked Penn State, who is an undefeated 6-0 in EIVA play. The baseball team started their week hosting out-of-conference opponents Brown for a two-game series. In the first game, the Patriots did not allow a single earned run to cross the plate. However, due to four errors by the Mason defense, the Brown Bears were able to record six runs and defeat Mason 6-5. In the second game of the series, both sides switched roles as the Bears committed four errors of their own. This took place on freshman Ryan Ritchie's first start as a pitcher that he only let two runs score in the fourth inning. Third baseman Brandon Gum was top performer offensively for the green and gold by going three for five with three RBIs. This included the game ceiling double down the left field line scoring Michael Smith in the sixth inning. The win goes to relief pitcher Ryan Galvin, his first of the season, and the save went to Joe Williams, his second. The team then turned their focus onto the first Atlantic 10 home series of the year against St. Joseph's. In the opening game of the series, starting pitcher John Williams allowed eight runs to cross and his four innings pitched to put Mason in an early deficit. For the Hawks, their starter Joe Mannion went eight innings strong and only relinquished four hits to the Mason offense. Unable to get a single tally in the run column, the Patriots would fall 9-0 to open the series. Moving to a closer matchup in Game 2, the Patriots trailed 4-1 heading late into the game. In the bottom of the seventh, Kent Blackstone doubled to the center field wall that scored Brandon Gum and Michael Smith that brought the team within one. Then, in the bottom of the eighth inning with two outs and the bases loaded, Michael Smith struck out swinging in the Patriots' last ditch effort to come back in this game, falling 4-3. In the final game of the series, Jake Kalish went 4-4 at the plate, scoring a run and being responsible for three RBIs. His performance alone would have been enough to seal the victory, but helping along the way was starting pitcher Tyler Zombro, who lasted seven innings and only let two runs come across for the Hawks. Luke Willis also had a monster game, going three for five, and stole his 16th base of the season that leads the Atlantic 10. With the victory, the team gets their 10th victory of the season, the 14 losses to go alongside it. In the Atlantic 10, they now stand at two and four in the bottom half of the league, while George Washington and Richmond attempt to run away. The men's tennis team played a familiar opponent in the UMBC Retrievers on Thursday. Opening the matchup, losing the doubles point, Mason had a tall task moving to the singles. Unfortunately for the green and gold, only Aaron Capitel could come away with the match victory as the rest of the roster fell to the Retrievers, and the team would do so as well, 6-1. In a matchup against the Bucknell Bison, once again Capitel came away with the singles victory along with Tanner Bain in the number 5 match, but that would result in the only two points for the Patriots in the entire match. The team now falls to 5-9 and nine on the season, still a couple weeks away from key Atlantic 10 matches. In a busy week for the women's tennis team, they opened up the week with a match against Morgan State. The competition started off with Mason winning the doubles point thanks to the victory from the pair of Morgan Yang and Marique Boers. They combined with a default victory in the number 3 doubles match, put Mason in a slight lead heading into singles. The bottom half of the roster critically completed their matches, the number 6 match being by default. And then the match was called by the coaches due to cold weather, giving Mason a 4-0 victory. 
On Sunday, the team played Chris for Newport, winning in dominating fashion by the score of 7-0, losing only one match, and that being in the number two double spot. Chris for Newport coming into this matchup was nationally ranked in the Division Three of the NCAA. This victory puts the green and gold at 12-7 on the year, with huge Atlantic 10 matches looming. To start out the Atlantic 10 season for the women's lacrosse team, they traveled to St. Joseph's on Friday night. Mason got off strong with goals from Jacqueline Spalding, Kirsten Russell, and Alexa McGovern to take a 3-0 lead. The Hawks would continue to fight back, but the Patriots not lose the lead once in the entire 60 minutes played. McGovern would go on to record three more goals to bring her match total up to four on the night, tying Caitlin McGinn's four goals, and Spalding herself would add two more as well, as the team would hold on and win 14-12, notching their first win in Atlantic 10 play. Then the team took on A-10 leading Massachusetts on Sunday. Carpentier, who was coming off a 15 save performance, allowed 17 goals to get past her while only holding six saves. Offensively, only one Patriot was able to score multiple goals, and that was Melissa Lobacaro, who recorded three goals. But there was only a team total of seven that resulted in a 17-7 loss. The team now moves to 6-4 and four on the season, 1-1 one and one in the A-10 play, sitting right in the middle of the pack with a lot of games to go. In a midweek doubleheader, the softball team hosted the Morgan State Bears, a team that coming into the series only had one win on the year. In both games, only three of the team's pitchers saw action as the trio of Casey Herring, Sarah Kleinfelter, and Christina Gabrielle recorded 13 scoreless innings. Combined, Brooke Blankenship and Liz Seymour were responsible for four of Mason's hits and had five RBIs. This led to Mason's two victories for the Patriots, the first by the score of 4-0 and the second 8-0 that only lasted six innings. Then, traveling all the way to St. Louis for a three-game series against the A-10 opponent, the softball team took one game in the series. The first matchup against St. Louis was able to get ahead with four runs in the first two innings and rode that lead for the rest of the game. Mason's Blankenship knocked a home run into center to bring the team within two in the fifth, but St. Louis would add on two more runs in the sixth to take the game 8-5. In the second matchup, the Billikens once again jumped out to a big 4-1 advantage after the first three innings. However, with Casey Herring pitching in relief for the Patriots and only allowing a single run, the offense was able to get back on track. This included a three-run homer by Herring herself to bring Mason back into the game, in which Mason would eventually take 6-5. Before action took place this weekend, Taylor Sharp and Bernard Freeman of the Outdoor Track and Field team were named Women's Rookie of the Week and Men's Performer of the Week, respectively. Sharp and Freeman both kicked off their outdoor seasons the previous week by holding the top spot in the Atlantic 10 in the 200 meter dash with results from the VCU Ram invite. This is the third time Sharp has earned a Rookie of the Week award from the A-10 and Freeman's first of the season. The team then traveled to the Raleigh Relays this weekend. Opening the competition, the freshman duo of Xavier King Jr. and the aforementioned Taylor Sharp finished second and third respectively in each of their 400 meter dashes races on Saturday. The relay team of Sharp, Jasmine Robinson, and Siobhan Briscoe and Kayla Williams won the 4 by 200 meter relay, the lone victory for the Patriots in the competition. However, Amanda Dinger in the javelin throw hit 42.2 meter mark that would put her in the postseason ECAC meet as a qualifying standard. Well, that will end this week's edition of Mason Sports Insider. Here is this week's upcoming schedule. On Monday, the golf team will continue their rounds at the Seahawk Intercollegiate. On Tuesday, the softball team will host a doubleheader against Towson starting at 2.30. The baseball team will also host Georgetown at 3 o'clock in a game broadcasted by Mason Cable Sports. The women's tennis team will then travel to Loyola for a match at 3.30. From Thursday to Saturday, the baseball team will head to Fordham for a three-game series. On Thursday, the men's tennis team takes on Howard at 2. Moving to the weekend, from Friday to Saturday, the outdoor track and field team will split duties at the Colonial Relays in Williamsburg, Virginia and the Florida Relays, while the softball team hosts a three-game series against St. Joseph's. Friday, the men's tennis team will play St. Joseph's at 2.30, the women's tennis team will play George Washington at 3, and the women's lacrosse team will face LaSalle at 3 o'clock. As well, this one will be broadcasted by MC Sports. To finish the night off, the men's volleyball team will take on St. Francis at 7 o'clock. This one as well, as you know, broadcasted by Mason Cable Sports. And will be the last on the weekend. On the last day of the weekend, on Saturday, the men's and women's tennis teams will play LaSalle at 12.30 and 2 o'clock, respectfully. Then later that night, the men's volleyball team will host the league-leading Penn State at 7 o'clock. Of course, this one also being broadcasted by Mason Cable Sports. To keep track of every event and really any sporting event that I find interesting, you have access to following my Twitter account, 
at the Tyler Byron. For those that celebrated, I hope you have a fantastic Easter weekend, and if you don't, I hope you have an amazing weekend as well. Until next time, I am Tyler Byron. See you next time, Mason.